yeah, let's get right to it then. So uh, the new album bearing the band's name, Angelus Abatrida, is actually coming out next month, February 5th. So uh, what can you tell me about that album? Well, this album, it's um, what's it going to be your new album, of course. It's, uh, it's going to be the seventh album of the band already. Um, and it was supposed to be uh, an EP, formerly. Uh, because it was supposed to, the, we were be touring a lot during 2020, and we'll just uh, record this EP like three, four songs maximum uh, by, the, by the beginning of the year. But of course, the pandemic came, so we kept on just uh, composing more music, and finally, by the end of summer, we find out that we got a new album actually. So we entered the studio, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> with the promo this of this new album. Uh, um, I'd like to, to say that for the first time we changed a, a bit the tuning. We, we went uh, half step down, which I think made the, the album sound a bit more aggressive or even like bigger. And that the main point is that this album has been composed and produced during a global pandemic, which makes it uh, quite special, actually. And I think even the, all the madness that we lived uh, last year, especially during the hardest months of the pandemic, are quite uh, somehow impressed inside uh, the music and, of course, the lyrics. So cool. Uh, I think it's a perfect presentation for somebody who never heard about Andy and Sopatri. I think it's, the, it's a very good beginning, <laughs> this new album, of course. Uh, yeah, it comes uh, <clears throat> out three years after Cabaret de la Guillotine on the clock, actually. So uh, how much did the current situation affect making of this album? So, I mean, uh, writing and the recording. In, in that case, I think it was the... No, uh, let's say that the best situ the best situation for doing this because we were actually at home, we couldn't be touring, so it was in, it was quite easy. Uh, we could focus only in music in uh, writing the music and and then the lyrics, and it was quite easy actually to to go on the studio as well because since we're a company we can move uh, with freedom. I, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I would like to say that Spain is like in the lockdown actually. And so it was, we, we wouldn't have a, like free movement, but since we're a company, we could go anywhere and go into the studio actually. So we were together recording. It took almost one, two months, sorry, for doing this. And we were quite comfortable because if it was in September and October when we were recording this, uh, we were very, very comfortable. So despite of all the bad situation with the pandemic, I have to say that it was quite easy uh, working on the new album. And, I think it was the, the the time of our career that we were more focused just on the on the album um, because we need to tour a lot. We're we're always touring because this is our main job, and, and of course a, a band like us has to be touring a lot if we want to make some money with this. So yeah, it was quite easy. Uh, but the bad thing is that we're still not touring, and we're in a very very bad economic situation. <laughs> but hopefully this will end and we can get through this yeah how is it to <clears throat> actually put the album out on a time like this as you said you can't tour so did you consider postponing it or no it would never it was never an option i think that somehow we thought that by the end of february everything would be more or less much better but of course it doesn't look like this right now, especially here in, in, in Spain. Uh, we are again in a almost strict lockdown because uh, the numbers are pretty fucked up right now. But at the same time, uh, the vaccination started quite early and there are a lot of people already that got about the vaccine. So I, all, all experts say that by the end of summer, everything should be all right. So it, yeah, uh, of course we we cannot uh, change that kind of things. A band like us uh, with Century Media Records, we cannot be changing the releasing dates. Uh, I think I think it's it's all right. I mean, it it will it will pass like maybe I don't know, hopefully three four months that we cannot go on tour. But we will try to do a lot of things, especially streamings or online things, 
And somehow I think that I believe that by the end of February, at least we could stay, start uh, doing some shows here in Spain, like in big venues for um, you know, large crowds, but you know, the, that kind of uh, social distancing shows. Uh, I think it's uh, possible. I think that we got like three, four offers for doing this in Spain. So at least we can do something. And of course, maybe we can just uh, doing like uh, streaming these shows worldwide. I don't know. But of course, we need to go back to work as soon as possible. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, it's a good start. And but now, yeah, you, you're right. I, I wish that we'd be a much bigger band so we could stay like two years doing nothing just living by the rents and living by the savings but it's not possible and we need to work yeah you have uh, actually booked a tour from june onwards uh how hopeful how hopeful are you that uh, these uh, dates will happen uh we, we already got this uh, tour in february and march with evil invaded but it's already postponed uh, because not, not only in Spain, but of course in the rest of, of Europe, especially Central Europe, uh, things are really fucked up too. Um, so this tour is just to postponed. There's no new days for that. But we still got these summer festivals. Yeah, it's like nobody knows what's going to happen. So there are some bands that they're, they're already postponing everything to next year. The So far, the festivals don't know nothing. It's, it's like it's like we, we're like, nobody knows. So hopefully it will, it, they will happen, maybe not, who knows. Uh, so far, uh, everybody's working like uh, everything will, will happen, but I, I don't know, dude, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I, I really need to happen, but realistic, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure they're gonna happen. I, I don't know. Hopefully they will, but you know, it's, it's, it's because we're in the worst part of the third way right now. And like everything looks so bad that who knows, maybe next month things will be much better. I have no idea. I mean. Yeah, uh, well, you are experienced guys. And like you said, uh, for you, it was uh, quite okay to uh, do the album at this time. But um, how has this time uh, affected the scene in Spain in a whole? Do you know how venues and other bands are doing? Yeah, well, yeah. about bands, I know that there are not many bands in our situation. Like, you know, there are the, the really, really big bands in, in Spain. So I think I'm pretty sure that they can keep on living like two, three more years with uh, the savings. Actually, we're almost a, a big band in Spain. So uh, we're already this 10 and 11 months already living by our savings, by the savings of the company. But nowadays it's, it's starting to be a bit worrying. And of course for the smaller bands, they, they don't, this is not their job, so they can do all right. I mean, this, uh, uh, their salaries don't depend on this. But I know that there are a lot of venues really closing and small, especially small venues and medium venues. They are closing and it's going to be a real problem for the future, of course, because of their jobs, but for the scene, I don't know what's going to happen for when, when everything comes back to normality. Let's see what will happen, because uh, I think it's going to be another crisis, uh, of course, with this. Yeah. And let's, let's see, but yeah, I know promoters, uh, venues, bars, pubs, uh, record stores, a lot of people closing the business and it's going to be very bad. So I think that nobody knows right now how big it's going to be the, um, the impact of this in the near future, I would say. But hopefully, I don't know. I have no, no idea. To be honest, right now, I'm just worried and focused on my own company and, and the band and, and that stuff. But yeah, of course, there are other hundreds and thousands of people that are really, really having bad time with this. Let's see. Let's yeah, let's uh, scoot away from the COVID a bit then. Uh, like I said, you are very experienced and, uh, well, you started over 20 years ago. So, uh, first of all, uh, how did the band get together originally? Well, um, I met Victor and David when I was 12 years old, something like that. Uh, because not, not so many people in my school were into heavy metal, of course. 
not in, into music at all, but of course not into heavy metal. So I started to, to search for friends outside my school, uh, how to say, yeah, school environment. Uh, so I met Victor, I met David, we, we started just sharing music and playing together. And of course the bass player Jose is my, my blood brother. So he introduced me into heavy metal when I was a kid. He gave me the first guitar lesson. So I started playing guitar thanks to him. And as soon as we just started to play some instruments, we started to play together as well. So this is why it happened 20 years ago. It doesn't mean that Angelus is uh, on the road for 20 years. Actually, professionally, we're on this just like 10 years. Uh, but of course, it's 20 years that, that we started playing together. So it, it happened like this. We were like just two different bands. I got my band with my with my friends, David and, and, and Victor. And there was another band, which was my older brothers with their friends. And we were sharing the same rehearsal room. Okay. It's not fair to say sharing because we were not paying anything. Everything was paid by my brother. But one day we just mixed together all the both bands and we started playing together. And it, that was what happened 20 years ago. So from this project that we just covered in our favorite bands and stuff, uh, that's how Angelus came up. Um, lady. But yeah, it's like 10 years working for this, like professionally, like touring and and recording and all that stuff. Our first album was released in 2006, but it's a very, very amateur, of course, and self-produced album. But well, this is our story. I mean, and 20 years with these guys is, uh, I mean, it's more than half of my life. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the thing that I did the most during my life. Of course, the, 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 for the rest of the guys is the same. But it's actually, I think it's really pretty cool. And I'm quite proud of that. And I think it's kind of privileged doing this. Yeah, how was the scene uh, in Spain back then when you were just 12 year old kids? <laughs> well, it was weird. I mean, um, Spain, I know that a lot of, a lot of uh, people, especially for countries like yours, that you used to have like a huge scene and exporting a lot of incredible bands all over the world. Uh, when when you think about Spain, you might be like surprised, right? But Spain actually got a huge and very very strong scene. I mean, everything came so late here, uh, especially because of the dictatorship of the fascist uh, Franco. Uh, everything came so late here. Everything from the movies and the music, of course, rock music came here in the beginning of the eighties. Uh, so. Not so many people, not so many, not so many bands came up in the in the eighties. But actually, there were like two, three, four very, very good heavy metal bands. Of course, all of them singing in Spanish, because for the same reason, uh, it was like not not uh, allowed to speak in other languages. So this is why I think that we got that kind of delay with everything cultural in in Spain. This is, I think it's because of the of the dictatorship. So when I was a kid, all the bands, uh, all the big Spanish bands were just singing in Spanish and it was quite weird, but I was more influenced by other bands. Of course, uh, the, 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 the great ones like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, Pantera, Sepultura, Megadeth, Metallica, of course. Um, but actually, we, we, we got a huge scene here. And by the beginning of 2000s, uh, started to happen a lot of huge festivals here in, here in Spain. And nowadays, we got like 10, 15 large festivals, uh, always sold out, like with incredible headlining bands. It's, uh, nowadays, it's really, really awesome. This scene. And, and of course, now we started to export many bands. So what, but, but when I was a kid, my favorite band was a hardcore band called uh, Sociedad Alcoholica. They were they are singing in Spanish, but I think it's a pretty good uh, trash crossover band, which uh, I love them. <laughs> and one of the Spanish bands that influenced me the most, I would say. But I've, I've never been a huge fan of the Spanish bands, especially singing in Spanish, because here it was more popular, like um, that kind of heavy metal, like more, power metal and I don't know that kind of Dungeons and Dragons heavy metal that I'm not really I don't really like it 
that well it's nowadays thanks that it's much better <laughs> Okay, and how do you see your own music, like the evolution of it during these, uh, well, 21 years? Well, I mean, we, we're, uh, I like to say that we're always, uh, we're an underground band that we try to keep um, learning more and more every every album. And we still learn a lot from everything and we try to improve ourselves. I think that we got a, a lack of um a lot of things since we were kids, as I told you, we started so, so, so early, and and of course we didn't have uh, um, where to. There was no path to follow, so we have to find everything by ourselves, and we we keep on working like this. Of course, since we signed to Century Media and we got like a booking agency, we we grew up a bit faster, but we are still learning a lot, and and I know that we have a, a lot. Of work to do yet. I think that the new album is a very good album, but I still we got to learn much more and improve ourselves and improve our music. And the, I, I don't know, doing just uh, that's the way I really like to to do my job. You know, like um, it's important to to keep on learning and to uh, realize that I mean that uh, you are not the. Of course, we are not the best band of the world, and that there is a lot of work to do and uh, especially for a band like us and in a country like, like ours so uh, i'm pretty happy with the evolution we got uh and i can't wait for the new for the new album like maybe in two years or something like this because i already know uh all the mistakes we we, we did and what uh, I how to explain it in english come on uh, this is another thing i have to do is improving my english of course so. Um, I mean, we're just workers. Uh, it's, it's like workers. We try to do our work the best we can, and we're always trying to learn from other people. And thanks that we're working with Century Media Records for already almost eleven years. Uh, it's like they are like our teachers, and so we just follow their advices, and we try to be better person and better musicians, and try to do the best we can. So that's why I, in the beginning I told you that I think that this new album it's the best presentation for someone that never heard about us, because of course if you listen to the first album you will you will realize there are a lot of uh, uh, it's a very very humble humble album and recorded with not with a lot of money and so yeah, we try to improve everything since the language to the instrumental thing. <laughs> 